Hey guys, um, you know, I get, oh, first off, ignore the ladder over there because I'm taking a break from roof cleaning and so, uh, it was just, it was just too nice to be outside cleaning my roof. <laughs> I know that's kind of stupid, isn't it? You want it to be nice when you're outside cleaning your roof, but, um, anyways, yeah, I'm just cleaning off moss and twigs and things like that and cleaning out the gutters. So, uh, I decided to take a break. Anyways, I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of uh, uh, people texting me through either our website or through the YouTube. And um, I want to try to answer all of them, but I just can't because there's just too many of them. So I, I do. I start trying to answer, and then it's kind of like uh, I, I try to get all the new ones for the day, and I just start typing. And then, you know, after quite some time, I'm just, I'm just kind of wore out because I just... I can't, I don't have enough time in the day. So um, I apologize if, if you ask me questions and I don't get them answered. I mean, I'll try. I try to answer almost all of them. But anyways, I, I'm taking the top 10 uh, questions that I get. Basically, I'm, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to formulate solutions for people, uh, specifically with their problems. And <clears throat> I'm not targeting specific problems. Uh, but I'm making a generalization is what I'm doing. And I've come up with what I think are the top 10 reasons why new gardeners struggle so much with their gardens. And um, I'm, okay, I'm middle-aged, so I have to have a piece of paper I have written down. But anyways, I've, I've, I've over time, have been adding uh, pieces to this until I had enough to say, okay, I think I'm going to make a video on it. And these are the top 10 reasons why I think so many people fail as new gardeners. Um, they get, they easily get discouraged. <clears throat> and I've had so many people, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how many messages I get from people who are just discouraged. They try something and it doesn't work. And so they, they want to just kind of, you know, they say there must be some mystery to it. Well, you know, when it comes to gardening, there's no mystery. It's trial and error. It's, it's learn along the way. Nobody has any uh, pixie dust or <clears throat> any kind of uh, mystical uh, you know, powers that they use to garden. It's all about doing it and learning. And that's how, you know, over 35, 40 years that, uh, you know, that I've been around gardening, that that's how I've learned. And I've made some major mistakes too. So it's, it's all about making the mistakes and learning from them. So anyways, I've got 10 reasons why I believe that people have, uh, they struggle, new gardeners struggle with, with gardening. <clears throat> Number one, I think what happens is they start out too big. They they think, okay, you know what? I, either they're going to escape the rat race or they're going to uh, stop buying stuff from the store and they're going to start growing all their stuff at home. And, you know, that's a good concept, but really that's that's a that's a recipe for disaster. <clears throat> because if you, if you haven't gardened before or gardened very little and you say, okay, I'm going to grow tomatoes, I'm going to grow lettuce, I'm going to grow, you know, beans and, and, and watermelon and all these things like that, you're going to fail because that's just so overwhelming. There's just too much to have to know. The best thing to do is to start out with a couple things that you like. If you like tomatoes, then grow tomatoes. If you like watermelon, grow watermelon. Just pick a couple things for one summer and grow. <clears throat> because every, every, every vegetable has a different need. And so one problem that you'll have with a tomato, you're not going to have that same problem with, say, cauliflower. So uh, you got to kind of, you know, you, you got to, don't get yourself overloaded. It's, it's what I call sensory overload. You just overload yourself completely with <clears throat> too much information and then you're just going to fail because you'll get discouraged. So you want to focus on growing tomatoes and say broccoli and you just focus on those two and you learn it really well. You get all the idiosyncrasies and all the problems that worked out with those and then when you've got those two plants mastered, well, nobody's got them mastered, but you know what I'm saying. And then you move on and you introduce maybe one or two more vegetables. And that's the way that you should do it. Don't overwhelm yourself. Uh, I think that's a, that's a really big mistake. Uh, number two <clears throat> is knowing when to start your plants, when to start your seeds. Um, I, there are so many people that will start them way too early in the spring and now they've got these big, tall, leggy plants that are just falling over because they can't get them outside. They don't have enough light inside to keep them growing. And, um, or they'll start them too late. They won't get them in the ground in time, and then they won't mature by the 
by the time frost comes. And so th that's number two is to knowing what time that you need to put these plants in the ground and then stagger, kind of, you know, gauge it right. Uh, number three is knowing what grows good for your area or your zone. Um, you wouldn't grow, uh, let's say, a, a giant, giant pumpkin if you live way, way up in the north and you don't have enough time for that pumpkin to mature or let's say, uh, you know, the big, huge watermelon, big icebox or whatever they are. If you grow, if you live way up in the north, then you're going to want to grow smaller ones, smaller, smaller watermelons that mature quicker. And it's the same thing if you live down south, you know, like up north, uh, like in Alaska, uh, we can grow, we can grow lettuce all year long. I've had no problem growing lettuce when I was growing lettuce up there. But trying to get watermelon to grow up there, there's only just a couple that will grow up there and they're small and whatnot. The same thing anyways, if you live in the south, you know, you're going to have to, because it's so hot down there, what grows good down there? You're not going to grow cool season vegetables in the middle of the summer down there. Um, and you're also going to want to know, if, like if you're doing onions, long day, short day, intermediate day, what onions do best in the north and in the south. So you're going to have to know your zone and know what vegetables do best in your area. A good thing to do is to contact your local extension office. Or if you have a farmer's market, go to a farmer's market and see what they're growing locally to sell at the farmer's market. And then you'll kind of know what, what grows good in your area. Um, number four, watering. Watering is a big issue. I've seen so many people think, well, my plants, they need, they need water, and they water them every day, and they're just, they're waterlogging them, and they're just getting soggy, and they say, well, look, it, I think it needs water. <laughs> so um, you've you got to kind of understand how plants are. Um, some plants need lots of water, like watermelon, man, they need a lot of water because they just, they suck up that water like crazy, but still then, you can overwater them. You don't want to uh, waterlog your plants and get the roots completely soggy all the time because then there's no oxygen and then they're just going to suffocate and they're going to die. So uh, you will, you can drown your plants, believe it or not. Uh, so you want, you, you don't want to overwater them and you don't want to underwater them. So that's the same thing when we go back to growing one or two kinds of vegetables. Understand and know how exactly what kind of needs that they have. Um, uh, fertilizing. Fertilizing is a really big problem that people have. They think if I just take fertilizer and I just buy any bag at the store and I just throw it on there, it's going to do good. No, there's, 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 there's certain needs that, that certain plants have. And what a tomato might have is not the same as what a lettuce might, uh, the needs that it might have. So uh, overwatering or over fertilizing and under fertilizing, both major issues. Um, and I'm going to actually be talking, I'm going to be making a video on that in the next couple weeks on what to fertilize, when to fertilize, how to fertilize, and things like that. So uh, just be cautious of that and, and know, what, know your plant's needs. Um, pest management, this is a big one. A lot of people think if I see bugs in my garden, I need to eradicate them. That is not true. Uh, the things, the things like spiders and stuff, I don't worry about them. Ladybugs, there's, some, there's lots of good bugs in your garden that are just fine and uh, you don't need to take a lot of pesticides and just spray it and then all you have is just this these vegetables growing and you look at that and there's no bugs anywhere and you're thinking oh that's good well that's that's not always good for your vegetables so um, because what you're doing is you, when you're killing the bugs and everything, you're damaging the plants too with all that pesticide it's always best to not use pesticide if you don't have to see I talk a lot with my hands don't I a lot of people say that I I talk a lot with my hands and I've done that since I was just like a little tyke I always talk with my hands a lot and I like so I, I don't want to distract you guys but anyways uh, yeah pest management is a is a is a big problem that people have I, I've heard a lot of people like uh, we go to these 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 growing community things that they have and and it seems to be one of the big ones. I see all these bugs, and, and uh, I was at one, and they said the, the lady that was running the, the, the it was kind of like a seminar, and she said, what kind of bugs were they? And, and the, 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 the lady goes, well, I don't know what they were. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you, don't, you can't have a solution to a problem that you don't know exists. So uh, that's another thing. You have to learn pest management. Um, let's see, number seven. Um, a lot of people ignore the soil's health. What they start to do is they, they just start throwing fertilizer and stuff on it and they're more worried about the plant than they are the soil. If you have a healthy, nutrient-rich soil, you're going to grow healthy, nutrient-rich vegetables. That's just the way it works. 
you need to target the soil. The soil is the most important thing in your garden. <clears throat> it's not the plants, it's not the way the plants look, it's your soil. If you have healthy soil, you have healthy plants. And you know, I'm, I, I'm sorry I'm squinting, I keep, I know, I got this adult ADD. But the sun is behind me, but yet, for some reason, it's just really bright out today. Anyways, I should wear sunglasses. But, you know, my mom always said it's rude to wear sunglasses when you're talking to somebody. So, <laughs> uh, soil health. Number eight. Number eight, people don't use mulch like they should. Mulch is really important. Mulch is going to hold in the moisture. It's going to cut down on your, 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 your watering. And it's going to also help with the soil health and it'll hold in the nutrients. It won't dry the top of the soil out, and um, it's going to cut down on weeding. So if you have weeds growing up, a lot of people, they, they'll just, I've seen people plant, and they've got lots of tomato plants, and in between they've got two, three foot weeds, and they just like, man, I have to weed every day. Well, mulch, because mulch is gonna cut down on your weeding. Um, if, if nothing else, if you don't really care about the soil health and, 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 and retaining moisture and whatnot, at least for the sake of not having to weed so much, Using mulch is very important. Uh, and then there's, you have to be careful about the kind of mulch that you use. Like you wouldn't want to use, I don't know, like nut shavings and chips and things like that. You want to be careful about like, I wouldn't take a walnut tree and chip it and then throw the nut, you know, the walnut shavings on. So you got to be careful about the kind of mulch. You can use, like if you use straw and hay and whatnot, you got to make sure that it doesn't have weeds, seeds in it and stuff like that. So um, I use wood chips. I use wood chips all the time and I love wood chips. Um... That was number eight. Number nine, the sun. The sun. This is, if, this is very important because you have to know um, your, whole, your whole yard. Like, even if you have to set up, if you're not out in your yard all the time, if you have to set up a video camera or a regular camera and take like still shots every 10 minutes or so all day long, look at how the sun is working in your yard because um, that's going to have a major role in where you're going to put your plants because you're not going to want to put like kind of shade or partial shade loving plants in the middle of your yard that gets sun beaten on it and at the, at the same time you don't want to put tomatoes in partial shade where they're only going to get four or five hours of sun tomatoes need to go where it's nice and, and, and warm and lots of sun same with watermelon and things like that so that's something to be conscious of is to know where the sun is in your yard and then lay out your plot exactly to cor kind of correspond with the sun. Okay, and number 10, um, you, you have to know about your plant spacing and the plant depth. For instance, if you're planting peppers and tomatoes and whatnot and you want to plant them a little bit deeper, then that's fine. You can plant those deeper than they were in the pot, the starch, you can plant them deeper. But um, there are things that you just can't you can't plant deeper. Most most vegetables, you just want to plant them deeper. So you got to know how deep to plant them. And you want to know how far apart to space them. Tomatoes, uh, you can get away with some some tomatoes. I've grown that I can get away with six inches. I can grow some small ones, that, you know, tiny Tim and things like that. I can grow, you know, within a foot. Um, but there's some that are, that are growing 10 foot tall. And I'm like, man, a foot's not big enough. You get two, three foot sometimes. And then even then when you go two or three feet, they're still kind of like touching each other. So know the plants that you're growing and know how far apart to grow them because uh, you certainly you want to make sure that they get plenty of sun and get lots of, of aeration because if you plant I've seen lots of people that like to do the square foot gardening and the square foot gardening is a, is a good method but when you plant stuff too close and you say well they did they do just fine look how big they are the problem is is that you are just asking for trouble if your plants can't get lots of air circulation around them so a nice plant standing by itself, with a with a you know a few inches or so of airflow around it is much better than pl planting a bunch of them together. So when you're when you're planting things like tomatoes and whatnot, you're not trying to create a hedge. You're you're trying to create one healthy plant and then another healthy plant. So you're not trying to create a whole row of healthy plants. And um, so that's I mean that that's something to keep in mind. So there are the top ten, and I know that there are a lot more. There's there's, there's things about seed saving and, you know, I was just talking a couple days ago about somebody planting corn and inbreeding depression and, you know, I said you had to have 100 square feet of corn if you want to save the seeds and things like that. And so that's another discussion later, but that's more advanced stuff. So don't over, I mean, don't overcomplicate it. Try to, try to stay small and try not to 
a lot of people have the tendency to go out on the internet and they try to suck up as much information as they can and they just keep absorbing it and that's all they do and then there's this sensory overload they get discouraged and then they just kind of walk away from it because they're, they're they don't have the you know they don't have the stamina to continue on start small take these 10 things that I say that I say and kind of apply them to just a couple plants for this year and I know that a lot of people right now there seems to be this thing going on about you know independence and what if the grid goes down and yeah I'm all about survivalism I believe in a survival garden and but you if you if you grow a couple different vegetables and they do well that's better than growing 30 different vegetables and all of them dying so start small and learn as you go and that's why we have YouTube channels like mine and, and all the others that if you have any questions just just watch the videos, post questions, and even if I don't get to answer them, post them in the comment section below. And you know, don't private message me. Post them in the comment section because a lot of times people will answer them in the comment sections before I even get to them. So that's a blessing because we have a great community of, of, of like-minded people that are, that are just willing to help. So, um, yeah, just you know, start slow and learn as you go and don't get discouraged because we're, we're all kind of in this together learning this together and no man is an island right so um, anyways I just wanted to throw those out there I hope this helps everybody and like I say if you have any questions post them below in the comment section and I'll try my best to get to them alright and don't get discouraged alright thanks for watching guys we'll catch you later